so moving on to sri lanka and australia so obviously the white ball part of sri lanka and uh, australian series is completed uh, australia won the t20 series 2-1 while sri lanka won the odi series 3-2 uh and uh, one thing that i wanted to talk about is uh, obviously when australia came to pakistan earlier this year uh, it obviously was the start of uh, their i know oh, their year in subcontinent obviously pakistan then there this right now sri lanka and uh, earlier next year there would be india so obviously there was some speculations on how well they'll do against the spin and seems like uh, sri lanka trapped them really well in the spin trap i guess they lost some close games and uh, uh, they are uh, still struggling especially marnus and smith even warner so i guess so uh, it is going to be a tough route for uh, australia in this subcontinental tour yeah australia feels like they've come back to where they were back in 2016 when they lost in Sri Lanka and the UAE pretty much back to back or and then you know they they were both series which uh, was supposed to prepare them for India but they didn't much better in India than they did in Sri Lanka uh so yeah we'll see how that goes from here uh i don't see australia getting white washed this time they do have the lead right now in the test match uh even you know even though they lost the ODI series i don't think they're too hung up about it um and yeah in this test match they have the advantage they have a 100 run lead already as we record this it'll probably be bigger when uh when the when this episode actually comes out and yeah still another test to go after this too yeah yeah this is kind of a thing that uh, we have seen with australia recently like uh, uh, there's a different version of australia every time to say the least you know uh, l- like you said uh, they kind of got defeated in uh, uh, sri lanka and uae rather easily and then did well in india uh, similarly uh, as we saw last year they lost in west indies and bangladesh and suddenly won the world cup in uae so i think uh, there is that thing you know despite uh, we seeing them not doing well against the spin and probably uh you know i'm mean, they are doing really well in this red ball red ball series against sri lanka and uh, they have done well against pakistan i want to say but uh, ultimately we know the pitches weren't that conducive ultimately uh so you know there's always that thing in mind that uh, Australia can easily turn up that at next year's uh, ODI World Cup maybe uh, you know despite uh, struggling with uh, the spin bowling here that is kind of their thing that uh, they completely they are completely different in uh, multinational tournaments yeah that's uh, the Australian legacy they always they always turn up and much to everyone's everyone's chagrin there's always so many to keep an eye on so how do we read into the whole you know odi series result obviously uh, uh they lost uh, 3-2 to sri lanka and uh, uh, of the three matches that they lost two were rather close i mean one of them they lost by 20 runs and one they lost by four runs so obviously they were close games ultimately and their team is more or less what it should be minus two or three players So what do you think would be going through their minds right now despite you know we have, as we have talked about that uh, they are kind of the team that turns up ultimately but uh, obviously you know there's this pressure and as the one day world cup in india is uh, kind of a different thing as you saw them in 2011 they were not as dominant as they used to be you know in their previous three world cups and uh, even in england they were kind of struggling a bit in 2019 so it seems like a 50 over world cups have kind of had australian trouble recently so do you think uh, this time also since they are already struggling against the spin maybe that can be their undoing this time again 
I think I think they'll be fine. Uh, I don't think they'll be too too hung up about it because you know they did lose some close games in that three two series loss, and just like in general the whole atmosphere of the series where it almost felt like Sri Lanka was fated to win based on what else is going on in the country right now and how badly they needed this. Uh, I don't I don't think they'll be too worried that they lost this. And again, there's a year and a half, not a year and a bit to go for the World Cup. They have plenty of time to prepare. They're going to be playing a lot more ODIs in the next uh, 15 months. I th- I don't think they'll be too worried about this. Actually, I wanted to move our attention to a certain game in the series. That was the third T20, uh, where uh, Sri Lanka chased down uh, 59 runs of the last three overs to win. Uh, this is the highest amount of runs scored in the last three overs in a T20 chase to win the game. And uh, probably uh, one of the best innings by the Sun Shanaka as far as uh, uh, you know innings in a T20I chase goes. So... Uh, I think uh, Sri Lanka has grown really well in for multiple formats, obviously. They have some talented players. And uh, how did you see that win? I mean, they had lost uh, the series already. But uh, it seemed like that win was kind of the one that uh, brought them up when they were down. Yeah, it's a, it's a very important win for Sri Lanka. Uh, and like, I don't want to... You know, keep banging on about context. Like in the grand scheme of things, that win didn't mean anything for you know Sri Lankan cricket and its position in the world. But that's that's irrelevant at this point in time because that was just you know Sri Lanka is a country in considerable crisis right now. So just any sort of win, especially a win of that kind in such dramatic fashion. Even if it was the dead rubber match, even if it was a series that doesn't affect anything else, just winning, a, just a Sri Lankan team winning, a Sri Lankan team made up of a very diverse set of uh, people from the island, just them being able to win, beat Australia, which is a team Sri Lanka really likes to beat, probably up there with beating England, beating India for the teams they like to beat the most. Just being able to do that in front of a packed home crowd at a time when the, the country needs any win it can get, that's, that's huge. And, you know, context be damned, that's, that's the, all the context you need. Uh, yeah, and uh, this is the thing, I think sometimes we forget uh, about what uh, the game of cricket ultimately is. I mean, as I told, the human factor is probably the most important uh, factor in the game of cricket. And uh, I think that... Uh, uh, comes in really well here because uh, uh, the f- fans, the players, anyone who is involved with the game is ultimately a human. And right now, uh, probably, I'd say every Sri Lankan is feeling the pain of you know bad governance or inflation or anything that is hurting them right now. There's a lot of things for them, especially. So I guess so. Uh, you know. This is the kind of win that, uh, you know, brings that human factor into the game, you know, uh, makes uh, uh, makes you remember all those uh, times, uh, you know, not, uh, you know, obviously the magnitude of it uh, might not be as big as a World Cup final victory or, uh, or any, you know, any other big win. But uh, ultimately it is, you know, what me and... Uh, I guess that is the game, game's uh, ultimate goal, you know, to entertain people and uh, 